noted as perhaps the foremost investigator in the field that's called multimedia, multimedia translation or the relation between multimedia and translation. Is that a correct way to term the field or should we be using other terms? Well, I think multimedia is a little bit misleading. Yeah. I think I've been working more on screen translation yeah. and maybe you can enlarge multi in, into multimedia but it depends what you mean because uh, if you look some, at some universities, they use the term multimedia and multimedia translation, but then they include comics, opera, mm -hmm. and things like that. And if I talk Video about... Video games? What? Video games, is that... No, 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 no. Just the traditional uh, comics, opera, right. uh, children, uh, children books. But I don't mean that. If I'm talking about multimedia, then I will say online products and offline. So, uh, so website... Uh, video games, CD, DVD, but not, I'm not referring at all, I'm not working at all with uh, uh, opera or uh, oh. uh, comics. Okay. So I think if we talk about multimedia, we have to be very clear about that. So even audiovisual? Audiovisual, exactly. yeah, in a very mm -hmm. large meaning. Okay. But mainly screen translation, meaning TV, video, and uh, films, wherever it's uh, broadcast on the internet or uh, video, for instance. Lots of the work with websites is nowadays classified as part of localization. <laughs> is, is that a useful term from your perspective? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I don't know if I, I think uh, this is a very, ah, how should I answer that? I mean, today you people use different terms. They use translation, they use localization, they use editing, they use uh, uh, rewriting, they use whatever you want. But uh, does it help to understand what we are doing and what we are aiming at? Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't want to fight for this term or another one. Okay. Uh, if you want to, to call it transadaptation, yeah. let's do it like that. But I don't think it's a very important matter of terminology. As long as you don't uh, reduce the translation to only set of words. Right. Translation is a little bit more than that. I think today we are doing, me dealing with multimodal text, multi-semiotic text. Right. Okay, whatever is on the screen, on the computer, on the screen in the movies, whatever. Uh -huh. Okay. And how does that change things? Uh, you mean compare with what? Traditional, technical <coughs> text translation. Well, it means you have to integrate a lot of different uh, activities than uh, just uh, a piece of paper with a, let a set of uh, sequences of uh, sentences mm -hmm. and then change into another language. You have to take into account uh, how the meaning is produced, how the work is done, how the things are built up. Mm -hmm. So it means a lot of different elements, not only linguistic elements, nonverbal elements, could be technical elements, legal matters and all these kind of things. And I think this is very important. Um, and that's, I think, the challenge of multimedia. I'm ready to use multimedia terms instead of audiovisual terms, audiovisual translation, if we are aware of this inclusion of these very different elements. Isn't it the case that in many parts, or many industries, the linguistic part of texts are being separated from the iconic, and the professions are thereby separated? Isn't that, is that positive or negative from your perspective? Well, it depends how you look at it. If you look at uh, money-wise, maybe we have some reason, uh, industry has some reason to divide the work between translators working on verbal aspect and uh, technicians working on different aspects. But I think if you want to be, to do good work, quality work, I think you have to take that everything into account at the same time. One person to do everything. Yeah, or not one person, but maybe one person working with other people. Right. Team working. Yes. 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 Not necessarily doing everything. I don't think we can be competent in many things, but the division of labor should not be so that you exclude the other one. Mm -hmm. Like I heard, for instance, uh, yesterday, that uh, now in Portugal, they are back to what the work was done 20 years ago. What sense? Uh, for instance, for screen translation, one of the translators is doing the work on the piece of paper, and then the technician 
is doing the work for subtitling. I think this is uh, not really the good work. You're, you're, you're from Finland, but you are French, I believe. This indicates an interesting trajectory. Um, I'd like to go back to about your mid-20s. Uh, where were you and what were you doing? And how did you get into translation studies from wherever that was? Well, in the, at the beginning of the 70s, I was in Sweden. And uh, I did work with some uh, different groups of people uh, from South America and also gypsies. And uh, I was teaching French as well, as a technical, uh, for technic te technical language, mm -hmm. special languages. So you were teaching French, but you did work in translation? Uh, no, it was teaching lang the language, yes, yes. special field. But yeah. then at the same time, I was working with these, uh, different groups of people, mm -hmm. OK? Because we have problems of communication, and there are problems of communication with administration. So I don't know how, how I came to be involved in that, but I was involved. Mm -hmm. And also because I was working for um, uh, some kind of humanitarian association, mm -hmm. uh, especially for Africa. And you know, at that time, maybe you do remember, at that time there were some uh, uh, liberation fights in Angola and uh, oh, Guinea-Bissau and so on. So I get all these kind of things at the same time. Yeah. And I remember, for instance, I was working with uh, people from Chile when they went away from Chile in 72, 73, 74. And then I moved to Finland in 71, I think. And then I realized maybe I must finish my studies. So I did my uh, AMA thesis in Finland. And uh, I don't know why. And uh, this is a very strange thing because it's a pure coincidence. But I did my work, uh, translated, trans I translate John Clare, which is a book English poet from the 19th century. You don't know him. He's no. a very unknown one. I've studied no, no, he's an unknown one. And I get into to that kind of work because I got in touch with Pierre Léris. I don't know if you know that man. He, has, uh, he was a translator and then he was editor of different books. And he was working on that. And I was I joined him in a way. And that became my uh, AMA thesis. Okay. I mean, this is, uh, I don't know. In France, you're doing it in France, yeah. I did in France, but I was working in Finland. Right. And I, th I think that you could do that kind of work anywhere in the world. Yeah. And I did my work there, and then I went back to, uh, to present my, my work in France. Mm -hmm. I was not a real good student. <laughs> I mean, I did not attend the classes. Right. <laughs> All right. And after that? Uh, when I started to work in, uh, in Finland in, at, uh, at the School of Translation, uh, I think that's good luck. Uh, there were, there are, I think, two, reason, two, two things I have to say. First of all, I was not allowed to stay in Finland. Uh, I mean, I could not get the permission to stay if I was doing a job which could have been done by a Finn. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. So then the School of Translation was looking for some people in French, and uh, I was the one. Mm -hmm. So there is some kind of good luck for yeah. me. Okay? And then that was, I think, 73, 74, and then I, I did work like that. You are married in Finland? I have never been married. Oh. <laughs> 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 Does it matter for me? No, no. no, no. <clears throat> um, you, you have knowledge of a lot of other disciplines, though. I've seen you talk about terminology, yes. socio-terminology, there's a sociolinguistic background there somewhere. Yes. Um, obviously, you're dealing with more than translation, or you have been dealing with more than translation. Well, my undergraduate studies were on, in linguistics and in sociolinguistic and discourse analysis. And I was really fascinated because I, I started with formal linguistic, and I was very frustrated because I think they never explain anything. And I could not understand that how can you study language without any user? So that's why I turned to sociolinguistic and discourse analysis. And from that, I understood uh, a lot of has to be done. Mm -hmm. So when I came to, to translation studies, I think I, I realized there is a link between, uh, because you are always in communication. So you have to study in, in that respect. You can't study translation as a formal piece of work, but something in a situation. Sure. When so did you move then to audiovisual? 
Ah, that's a son of a thing. <laughs> I worked with Godard, 67. I was very young at that time. Worked with him? Yes. 67, 68. Video. It was the beginning of the video. Jean Luc Godard. Jean Luc Godard, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. 67, 68. And at that time, because I was with a friend, we have a cinematheque. And every week we are releasing films. Uh, underground American films or traditional classical canonical films. And uh, Godard was interesting to use video as a kind of weapon for mm -hmm. some people. And uh, he did not want to work only in Paris, so he came to some of our cities and asked people to join, and we did join. So that was the way, and I, was, I have always been fascinated by movies, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So for me, it was a very logic to, to go on like that. And then when I started to, to think a, a little bit about cinema as a global means of communication, I realized that in film studies, they never talk about problem of language. I mean, cinema is voiceless. Mm -hmm. So I understood there is something to be done. And then I have been working with some people on uh, Finnish TV, and uh, they were very keen to do something, but they did not have the tools or the concept to do. So we worked together, and then that's the way it went. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so with professional engagement. Yes, 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 but uh, not regular. It has been uh, just like, uh, <laughs> like that. You've been director of the translation school in Turku. Yes, for some time. So yeah. Yeah. And Unfortunately. Unfortunately. But, well, but you still are director. Yeah, in a way, yes. Okay. yes. Uh, we are three professors, and only professors can uh, have responsibility. You've also been president of the European Society for Translation Studies. Okay. You're now general editor of the Benjamin's Translation Library series. So you're doing a lot of administrative, editorial work, publishing work, or extra things. Is that problematic? How can you still do research? You're still publishing articles as well. Right? Well, maybe that's why I get white. <laughs> no, I don't know. I get time. I think, I don't know, it's a question of organization, of planning. Because you stay calm. Yes. I must say, I don't understand how people are working. I don't understand, I can't explain how I'm working, but I can work quite a lot, but in a very maybe efficient way. And uh, I realize uh, with some colleagues, not only in Finland, but abroad, that they say they work a lot, but when you ask them what do they do, in fact, they work maybe three hours a day, and they spend four hours planning how they will work. Mm -hmm. So I don't understand why they do it. If I work seven hours, I work seven hours full time. Yeah. Uh, from that perspective, I mean, you, you've, you're engaged in administration, also in the organization of, of the research community. What do you think are the main challenges facing particularly European translation studies at the moment? Which directions should we be heading in? If you're doing a thesis, where would you like to be people to do? Well, I think first of all we have to recognize that the field is very fragmented. Yeah, sure. And I think that's a problem. It's very difficult. I, I don't know. I get sometimes uh, optimistic that it's, uh, we can do research in translation studies, and sometimes I believe that the field doesn't even exist. So it goes like mm -hmm. that. And uh, I don't know. I don't know. I must say it's not easy to answer the question. What about the role of the EST, European Society for Translation Studies? Well, the association is what the members wants the association to be. If they are not very active, then the association uh, does not do very much. I think, uh, the, for me, the association should do more on the, to give more visibility on this uh, field of research. Mm -hmm. And uh, to do that, it means you have to go out, not only uh, edit text or anything, but go out and uh, talk with some people or some institutions or maybe academic people or also with other disciplines. Mm -hmm. But I, I think that's the need of, in our field. We need to get to open up.
Not only the academic community? No, no uh, also outside. Okay. Yes, uh, with institutions to make people, to make people and institutions to realize how important this translation is. Okay. Do you mean European Union institutions? For instance. Okay. Yes, and I think there is a challenge today. Uh, last year, the, the Commission has published a memorandum to the, to the Parliament saying, for instance, we could use. Uh, subtitling as a tool for language learning, mm -hmm. but they said we don't have any research to, to ah. promote. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one good example yes. of, and if you think for instance about the uh, problem of mi migrants in Europe today, mm -hmm. uh, the certain countries like Germany, France, they have no translation policy, they have no language policy for that, mm -hmm. because, well, then you know, migration has been very old. But let's say like countries like Ireland, Portugal, Finland, they are new countries and new mig migration, with a new migration policy. Mm -hmm. I think it's time now to talk about uh, maybe language policy, translation policy, and also because with the new technology, you can do much more than you could do in the 70s. Yeah. But it's up to us to bring some ideas and say, yes, something can be done. We cannot just complain that these people don't integrate to the society, there is social integration problems and things like that. I think we can do something. And for me, again, the societal aspect is quite important. Good. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very thank much. Thank you. <laughs>